Hello everyone, welcome back to Soap by Dennis. My name is Dennis and today I'm going to show you how to make a black tea and bergamo soap with lanolin. So I'm adding my sodium lactate to my cooled off lye solution um, just to help firm up my bars a little bit better. Um, my oils and lye solution are around 25 degrees Celsius and um, I found that this worked perfect for this recipe. Um, the 5% Lanolin, uh, you don't want to add much more uh, generally since it can thicken up your um, your batter quite fast. But I found that with the five percent, it was behaving perfectly well. I added my fragrance oil, uh, black tea and bergamot, quite early on into my oil since I know it behaves very well. There's no acceleration or rising. Um, that's why I added it so early. So I'm checking for emulsion here, and. I think it's starting to look good. So I decided to pour off just a little bit of uh, my batter to add a contrast color. My main batter is gonna be colored with titanium dioxide, which I pre-mixed um, in a bottle that has some little metal um, ball bearings in it uh, just to help shake them up very well and uh, prevent clumps. I got this from some other videos on YouTube and it helped me a lot because my titanium dioxide is always mixed in very well because of this. So I'm adding my mica that I pre-mixed with a little bit of my oils um, and it's a nice green color and I thought it would be, um, I wanted to have like a little bit of a bergamot color which I know it isn't, like it should have been more lime-like but um, I, I still thought it was good enough <laughs> for this soap. I also didn't want to use activated charcoal in this soap, so my black tea and bergamot soap is not really black, it's white, more like white and bergamot, but um, it doesn't really matter. The, the scent is really fresh and nice, and I think it goes well with this color combination as well. So as you could see, I uh, did an in-the-pot swirl. I just poured in from one spot and uh, let the batter divide, well, spread out by itself to get a, a different effect than when you um, go back and forth with your... Um, which are better, um, it would create more lines or it would just be a totally different swirl actually. So I think the inner pot swirl can be used uh, many different ways and get very different effects. So now I'm doing my the top of my soap. I added the last bit of my green to one side and now I'm gonna texture the top with a spoon, um, moving the white towards the green, which is also something that is not my own idea. It's just something I've copied from many other videos because I really like the look of it. <clears throat> so it's the next day and I'm ready to cut my soap. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out because with In The Pot Swirl, you will never know how it's gonna look like. Um, especially since I didn't use that much green. So I have a feeling it could be, um, you know, like a lot of green in one part of the soap and less green in the other part of the soap. Like it's very, it's, it's different every time. So I first cut off the ends just to make it really smooth. Whenever I line my mold with freezer paper, I always get, um, I, I, I never get smooth ends. Like the sides are very smooth, but I never get the ends to be very smooth. So I always um, calculate in that I, I can cut off a little bit and still get the amount of bars that I want. And I think that looks awesome. Now you can see tiny little tiny little air holes, but it could also be from the cutting uh, with a wire cutter. Um, I don't really mind them. You can smooth them over with your finger and often they just disappear. Um, but they were they weren't they weren't like big gaps, so I was fine with them. And it almost looks a little bit like a line pour which I think is really interesting since I didn't really, I didn't move my, my batter at all. I just poured it from one spot and uh, this cool little back and forth lines, um, which look totally intentional, which <laughs> they really weren't. Um, yeah. So my, my soap is not as firm as it normally is when I cut it. Now this one um, is a lot of white and just a little bit of green, which is quite different than the first two that I've cut. But I still think that's quite cool. And I think this one is pretty similar. And it almost has sort of a little heart at the top right corner. Which of course was totally intentional. I just think it's it gives such great satisfaction cutting these bars. Just in general, just not knowing what's gonna be on the inside. And it really challenges my patience every time because I 
I'd like I like to wait 24 hours at least before cutting my soap and sometimes it will take even longer but I don't think I've ever waited longer than 24 hours I literally just give up so here my soap um, didn't stay uh, put very well once I, I made the cut and it moved a little and that's why I had this little dent or like a very uneven cut and the next bar would have had the same uneven cut now so I decided to just cut off about like two millimeters uh, just to make sure that the rest of my bars won't have any uneven um, areas and that's the good thing about a cheese cutter um, that you can like a wire cutter in general you can really get very small slivers of soap soap <laughs> I can't speak it's very early in the morning uh, that I'm recording this guys um, I literally just woke up and my voice is like what's going on why are you talking <laughs> So yeah, I cut that, that bit off and now I get perfectly straight bars again. But I am holding on to my soap very well this time, um, just to make sure it doesn't happen again. I guess that's the the benefit of having like one of those multi-wire cutters that uh, lots of professional soapers have. I just I just don't have the, the budget to um, to buy one of those. And I also I make quite small batches of soap and I, I'm not I don't sell my soaps. So I actually think it's quite fun cutting each bar individually. Um, but yeah, you have to sometimes be a little bit more careful so that it won't um, get uneven or just hold on to your soap. So the end piece is a little bit thinner than the other ones, but I actually calculated for the, um, the amount of soap that I, well, I don't didn't need a certain amount, I just wanted a certain amount. So now I'm just going to put them out on the table and um, show you guys what they all look like next to each other. So some are a little bit similar um, and some are very different. I really like the one with the sort of floating heart at the top. Um, yeah, I just think that that turned out to be a really cool effect. And I'm also very curious if um, I'm going to notice a difference between this soap with the added lanolin um, and my other soaps, which all are a little bit more similar in recipes. Um, and I just wonder if this 5% of lanolin... Um, Will go noticed also if, if i if i will feel this on my skin so i hope you enjoyed it and see you next time bye